So your name is Jeff Swanson. Swanson. And how long have you been interested in coins for? Well, since I was seven here. Wow. The store um, is called Golden Eagle Coins, and mm -hmm. I started it about ten and a half years ago. Wow. Okay. I lost uh, a job that I was uh, at. They were bought out, and a friend of mine suggested uh, I start this. So uh, I've been enjoying that ever since. I started it right from the ground. I mean, I had nothing to start with. Wow. So I've uh, been building for all that time. Do you have a earliest memory or fondest memory of coin collecting? Yes. Uh, when I was, oh, seven or eight years old, I uh, went in my grandma's house and her uh, dresser she was going through some stuff and she took out some coins and I saw them and they were uh, the Walking Liberty half dollars and I was intrigued by them. Wow, so yeah. uh, I worked it a little bit and I finally was able to get them. She gave them to me <laughs> nice. and uh, I've been collecting ever since. Awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a great memory. For yeah. Sure. It's a connection to the past. And it... Uh, was a really interesting coin I've never seen before. So I, I enjoyed starting with that one. All right. Wish I could say I still had it, but somewhere along the line, it, it's probably in one of my collections somewhere. I hope I never sold it, but I could have. Yeah, I hope you didn't sell it either, you know? Um, being tied to certain coins because yeah. of family members is huge. You yeah. don't want to let go of stuff that you've had. Exactly. Um, next question. Did you learn about grading coins through coin shows, coin collecting on your own, or through books? Uh, mostly through books. Uh, I studied the uh, uh, guidebooks on how to grade coins, and they were a lot of help in doing a lot of comparison. Uh, I'll bring in coins that uh, have been graded professionally in the slabs, okay. and I'll study those to see how far accurate and how accurate I am. And I'll use that as well. And then I have a collector friend who grades his coins very conservatively. And I kind of follow his lead. And I like the coins to be graded so that I know that my customers won't have any questions. If I grade something extra fine, they're not going to say that I overgraded it and therefore right. overpriced it. So I'm always pretty conservative with my grades. But... Uh, the books have helped me a lot with that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there's a standard to hold to, so I stick with that. So mm -hmm. that when you look at the standard and I look at the standard, you know, we can both agree, okay, this is what the book says. So my coins are that way. Nice. I, I need to learn about grading myself, and I guess some books would be good to know about. Books or... are the starting point, but experience is the big thing is uh, you just have to keep at it and keep up on it and uh, don't go all over the board. I usually start with uh, the most popular coins and then go to the less common ones later on because those don't come up as much. Okay. What kinds of coins interest you the most? I like the ones that nobody sees. The <laughs> ones that are very unusual, uh, whether they're foreign or U.S. Um, there was one that was in the shape of uh, Captain America's shield. It was a two-ounce uh, silver coin. I thought that was really nice. But uh, as far as the U.S. coins, I like the ones uh, that are very unique or very ornate, like the Walking Liberty Half Dollar. I think that design is that on that is just wonderful. So uh, those are the coins I like. They appreci I appreciate the artistic nature of the coin and the design. I can understand that, yeah. for sure. I, I like the um, older coins myself, or like the ones not people, not many people see because they're more uncommon. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what coins do you personally like collect? Well, I have a U.S. collection uh, of... All the different types, you know, Lincoln cents, Mercury dimes, and all that.
but I also have a collection of coins with uh, meteorites in them. I like oh, wow. mete meteorites. Uh, different countries have taken little slices of meteorites and have put those into coins and um, have marketed those like Cook Islands and stuff. They're uh, kind of obscure, but uh, they tie in a collection, two collecting uh, interests I have, both meteorites and coins, and put them together. And it's kind of sure. unique, and they're more or less rare because there's not that many meteorites out there. True. So uh, I, I, that's one of my favorite collections, something that's uh, from outer space, but yet is a coin, too. That's awesome. I've never heard of that before, and now, now I'm like thinking about where can I get me one of those? Maybe well, you have some. I'll have to show. I have to show you some of my collection. All right. Um, was there a person in your life that got you interested in coins? Well, that would have been Grandma. Okay. You know, she did that. Uh, she just had them. She didn't have a collection of them. She just saved them for whatever reason. My mom uh, actually had a coin collection. Okay. And. Uh, Eventually, I was able to get that too. Oh, you know, yeah. mom, you know, kind of mom, mom. Can I have this? Can I have this? She eventually gave it to me, so I had a start of a collection, and there was even a rare coin in that uh, book too. So I was able to get a rare coin to start with as well. Well, that's really that great. coin I kept. Yeah, uh, I was going to mention something about my grandfather and how he got me interested in coins. Mm -hmm. Um, well, my grandma also did. She had a, like a wheat penny book that she shared with me. And then she got me into this collecting statehood quarters, even though they're not right. really rare or valuable or anything. They're just something to start with to fill up a book. I think that uh, collecting coins, whether they're rare or not, is, is still fun. I mean, you have that connection with your uh, grandparents. Mm -hmm. I did too. That's, that's something that you can share. You know, the grandparents relate to you through the coins but uh it doesn't have to be rare you know a, a nice uh, collection of state quarters those are actually pretty interesting because there's so many different designs and uh pretty much anybody can appreciate it so yeah. i like that collection as well it's a good collection i'm currently collecting the national park orders now mm -hmm. just because i think they're beautiful and you yeah know. those are those are well done as well a um, lot of different variety in there 56 uh, different coins and there's only two left in the series oh yeah so you'll have that complete pretty quick yeah i'm looking for the older ones because i didn't like start collecting them until mm -hmm. i don't know 2016 so like the 2010s are harder to find they're harder to find but they're usually not any more expensive yeah. And that's one nice thing is that collection. It's something that people can do and it's not expensive to do. Right. And that's that's always great. <laughs> yeah, especially with a limited budget. Next question. Where have you seen the greatest growth in the coin field since you started? The greatest growth? Um, probably in the silver coins, the variety of silver coins. Uh, more countries have been become involved with producing coins that are uh, collectors will enjoy. Okay. Uh, different countries have come out with their own bullion coins. Right. And yeah. they're bullion coins, but they end up being collector coins as well. Yeah. And more countries are hopping on the bandwagon, and some of them are producing some beautiful, beautiful items. Yeah, I've seen. Uh, what's a what's a good one? Uh, Rwanda, believe it or not, from Africa, produces a real nice uh, collection of uh, coins with a shape of Africa, and then they put uh, an animal on it each year. It's a different animal. Oh wow! And I, and I like that. I think that's pretty cool. That is cool. Um, has there been any change on in items that people buy, or is it just kind of like regular, like? There's a regular flow of what people tend to buy. Well, most people will start with the standards, uh, the Lincoln cents, the nickels and stuff, things that are easily within their budget. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then later on, they'll try to get the rare coins. As they get older, that's when you find old men coming in with uh, a larger wallet yeah. to get the coins that they've always wanted to fill that hole. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, since gold and silver markets are up and down, there are, are there more people buying bullion than before in previous years? For a while, yes. Uh, the volatility in the market is what drives people away from collecting uh, or accumulating silver and gold. When you have a steady uh, run, whether it's down or up, okay. people uh, tend to buy during that time. If it's going up, you have all sorts of people saying, "Well, I want to get a piece of that. You know, I want to be in on that market." Uh, when they're going, when it's the prices are going down, people are looking at all the bargains they can get, and they keep doing that as well. But when it goes up and down, up and down, people just want to, you know, stay hold back and just look at it and say, "Okay, I'll wait until it's you know a little bit more steady." All right, that makes sense. Sure. Um, number eight. How has this pandemic affected your business? Um, It's put a big dent in it. Uh, People are staying away. You know, they're not coming in. They're staying home. I had a guy come in not too long ago. He had to get some supplies, and he said it had only been the second or third time he's been out of his house. Wow. You know, where I would have visitors come on a regular basis, they're either coming less frequent or the worst case is they're buying online you know there's a lot of people that have found out how to buy coins online and trust a little bit more so they're stick sticking with that and they're not coming into the stores as much that's hurt yeah yeah i i I have a tough time with that one i can see how that would happen too you know oh i don't know this very well i don't want to go online because I don't know it and then you're stuck at home because of the pandemic a lot of things are closed down yep. and you don't want to go anywhere you don't want to risk your health so then you end up oh I'm going to try this online thing and look for my coins this way yeah and then... they they do and uh they can buy a coin at two in the morning in their underwear and <laughs> you know they they uh can get something in and uh you know they don't have to come in here and get in their car and you know travel and hope that i have it they know it's online they can get it that way but at the same time they don't know exactly what they're getting you know is there a scratch that they couldn't see online is the coin even real is it gonna take forever to get it is the shipping going to be you know uh, too much is it uh going to get lost in the mail or is it going to sit at the end of their driveway in the mailbox all day where somebody else can grab it you know those type of things happen and the worst that i don't like is when people come in and they bought something online and then they want me to tell them they've got a good deal well first thing i tell them is well you didn't buy it here so i know you didn't get a good deal (laughs) but uh yeah, that, that has been a big problem. Is the pandemic has uh, forced people to buy from home. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, for them it's good, but not necessarily because there's a lot of information that, you know, is exchanged when somebody comes in and looking for something. I can tell them things. I can help them find something else that they hadn't considered. Right. And there's more things to choose from as well. Yeah, and you can guarantee everything is real and not fake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope to guarantee it. At the very least, I'll stand behind it. Okay. Yeah. You know, and if they get something that's not real online, well, they have to return it. But nine times out of ten, I don't think people bother to return it. They just chalk it up as a lesson learned yeah. and move on. But uh, they paid for the coin. They got something they're not happy with. They paid for shipping. They're not going to get that back. Right. You know, when they buy it from me, I'm sure... I'm going to tell them what they've got is real, what they've got is uh, a good coin, and, you know, here's some other things that can go along with it. You know, I've got the supplies for them. I've got the guidebooks for them. I've got the albums for them. 
you know, there's a lot goes with it. So I really appreciate when somebody makes the effort to come in. Right. I'm glad I come into this place for sure. It's like well, thank my, you. my safe haven, I guess. Yeah. In the world. Well, I try to make it as comfortable as possible for people. I have uh, good lighting, um, a nice atmosphere. It's, I keep it clean. I keep it organized. You know, you don't see junk piled up on the counters and stuff. I mean, that's what I want people to feel is that they have a nice place to come to. That's, you know, it's absolutely awesome that you do that. Thanks.